morning, friends. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage. That is also the name of my website if you're looking to purchase some of the supplies. It's also the name of my Facebook page if you'd like to friend and follow the page. You'll be notified every week when I put a new video out. Like the one today, I'm going to be upcycling a jewelry box that I found in the thrift store. Here's the jewelry box that I found in the thrift store before, and here's what it looks like now. And I'll show you how to do this step by step. If you have to remove any labels or any of these stickies from here, I just used a very hot, wet cloth put it over there, took it off, and then just removed the labels from anywhere else around the box. Then I took this 91% isopropyl alcohol and put it all over the box. I wanted to remove any traces of oil or germs or bacteria because this was in a thrift store and everybody and their brother was picking it up. And I'm using chalk paint naturally because the chalk paint doesn't require any sanding. I just wanted to make sure it was a clean surface. And I'm going to cover the whole box with the chalk paint. I'm going to do two layers of this. And the chalk paint dries relatively quickly. I think it dries even faster than acrylic paint. So I'm going to paint this whole thing on the outside, a little bit on the inside, and put it aside to dry. So the box is dry and I'm doing a transfer. And a transfer is basically when you make a copy of something with your printer and most of us have an inkjet printer. So I strongly suggest that you get a laser print from a store like a Staples or what have you. Then you can just lay down your decoupage glue and your print has to be, if it's got script on it, you want to print it out backwards. You flip the image. So we put the decoupage glue down and we want to make sure we get this as firmly pressed down as possible. And you can use a spoon, you can use, a, if you have a hard brayer that works well too. And then you just leave this aside to dry for an hour or so. Now once this is dry, I took a clean rag, this is a little bit rough, and I wet it and I went over the surface of the transfer and you want to find kind of the right pressure in order to remove the paper. What you're doing is rubbing the paper away so that the ink stays behind which is why a laser printer works much better than an inkjet print. An inkjet print, inkjet print, that's hard to say, will not come up as intense and it could also wipe away because believe it or not, even though it's ink, it is not permanent. So you can see why I did a flipped image and I'm not worried about the edges because I'm going to cover those. So I'm just removing all of the paper here. Now I'm done with taking the paper off so that the transfer is showing through. And I'm going to take a nail file. It's an acrylic nail file because it's a little bit more firm. And I'm going to sand around the whole piece in just areas where it looks like it might have gotten some natural wear and tear. Just sand away to that bottom wood. And now I'm going to take my napkins, which I have not separated yet, and I'm going to use a paintbrush to tear away just small sections of the pattern here that I want to place all over the box. And you may want to do a dry run first, see where you would like the napkins, but I'm going to tear several of these roses away. And before I separate them, I'm just going to let them dry. You also want to place your fingers down over the areas that you don't want to tear so that when you wet the napkin, you can see here that this leaf could tear. What I'm going to do is place my finger down to hold it in place while I tear the napkin away. Right there. And I'll go around and do this with the rest of the napkin.
Now I'm going to separate all of the napkins I just cut. If you wet your fingers and dry them off a little bit, you can pull them apart pretty easily like this. Now I'm just doing a dry run. I want to place my napkins down where I think they're going to look the nicest. When I'm happy with the pattern or the way that I have this placed, I'm just going to move the napkins aside. And I'm going to do that method again where I place the napkin down dry and I use the paintbrush. I wet it a little bit with water and decoupage glue. And I don't want to saturate the brush but I do want it wet enough where I can paint the napkin down. And on these edges here, and you're probably working on a different pattern, but when you've got tricky edges here, I like to use this flat head brush. And when I'm working on the flat surface, I like to use this fan brush. Same thing, dry surface, place the napkin down, and with a damp brush, with a little bit of decoupage glue on it. It's almost like I'm painting the napkin on. And here I am with the flat brush going around these edges again. And you can see that I have some excess there. I'm going to leave that all there until it's dry and then I'm going to file those edges away. You don't have to use two brushes. If you're going to use just one, I would recommend not using the fan tail brush, but the one that's just got the flat edge to it. Then I put this aside to dry, and now I'm back, and now that it's dry, I'm going to take that same nail file and I'm going around all of these edges just to file away all of that excess and leave a nice clean edge here. I'm also going to go around the napkins and sand away a little bit just to age it a little bit more up top here too. Now I'm taking a, a toothbrush and this is just designated for crafts and it's very flexible and I'm adding a little bit of water to a plate and I'm taking this acrylic, you can use any acrylic paint I think, this is just called nutmeg and it's an antiquing medium but I still want to mix it with water and you might want to practice this on a napkin first and make sure you put some paper down because this will splash all over the place and I just mix these and I take the toothbrush and splatter it all over the jewelry box. It just adds a nice little tiny touch of aging to it again. Now I want to add I want to add some decoupage glue and that could be Mod Podge or whatever your favorite decoupage glue is over the whole surface just where I did the decoupage and the transfer, you don't need to do the whole box. We are going to put a top coat over the whole box. And now I'm going to add the matte top coat, the matte varnish over the whole piece. So we're going to do every place where we've painted and once the decoupage medium has dried on the surface we're going to cover the whole surface with the matte medium also. And now that everything has dried I'm taking E6000 glue. This is an old earring where I only have one left <laughs> and I'm gluing the earring down and a line of flat back pearls to the top and bottom here and then that will complete our upcycle jewelry box. Here is our finished project for today. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask me below. It is taking me a bit longer to get back to you. Uh, normally, I would do it within a day or two days. Sometimes it's taking three days. Thanks to you guys because that's because there are so many more subscribers and questions and comments. And thank you so much for your compliments. Thank you for subscribing. Again, don't forget about Upcycle with Decoupage on Facebook. If you like and follow the page, you'll be notified on Facebook every week when I put out a brand new video. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know I love doing it. And I will see you next week with another video. Thanks again. Bye-bye.